Hey everyone, you're here with Mark Dowell at PerfectGardens.com. So today we got a couple comments from Sam Blank and OGK Fabrication. I just want to say both of you guys are correct and I'm going to explain the difference on where you guys are coming from and how we kind of come together on these separate viewpoints and see how both techniques can be successful when used with specific growing techniques. Are you tired of getting any crappy advice from your local hydroponics store or having to search all over forums to get advice that only takes you in different directions than solving your immediate problem? Well, join our membership for $50 a month. You get direct access to me. We'll connect on WhatsApp app. And just like this gentleman that started back in July with us, as problems arise, we are here for you. So Sam Blake's comment says that with new feeding techniques, uh, you no longer have to defoliar. And then OG talks about how defoliaring is for airflow. Then Blake recomments saying he's talking about how it's not for airflow, it's for light penetration. And he's talking about a technique called crop steering. Okay, so just to be specific, crop steering is when you add in a very specific amount of water as the plants are transpiring when the lights are turning on and turning off. And you're kind of giving a smaller amount of water more often throughout the day than kind of just giving one large amount of feed than walking out of your grow room and not really worrying about your feed schedule for the rest of the day. So let's be really clear, guys. If you spend more time in your grow room and you dedicate your life to your grow room, yes, you will get better yield and higher quality because you're right there. You're watching the plants every day. That's your job. That's your life. And of course, there are going to be things that you could do to help reduce the problems that the plants go through throughout their entire growing season. One of those things is a poor growing environment caused by higher humidity and influctuations throughout the humidity and temperatures throughout your growing season. So let's be really clear. Again, every single time the plant goes through stress, it's going to reduce its yield because when it goes through some stress, it has to recover from that stress to begin to start growing again. And a lot of times we wouldn't think that watering is stressful to the plant, but it's about how we're watering, right? If we're watering too much and there's excess humidity in your grow environment, well, then that humidity is going to evaporate away. And when it's evaporating away, it might begin to create an environment for powdery mildew. Or later in your season, it might cause some mold to grow in your stem. Or because of the higher humidity environment, it might attract gnats or white flies and when white flies or gnats die on your plant mold begins to grow so once again it's not the watering per se that is the stress it's your technique around the watering and so for example crop steering what he's saying is you don't have to defoliar and you can if you want for light penetration, but you don't have to because when you are giving a very specific amount of water, which is normally a small amount of water more often throughout the day, specifically around when the plants are transpiring. So this technique is really measuring when the plants transpire. So when they're basically sweating and during at night, the plants don't sweat or the soil doesn't really go through evapotranspiration. And I totally butcher that word. I never get that word well, uh, say it well. But anyways, basically when water is evaporating off of the soil or the leaves are breathing and releasing more moisture. So what this technique is doing is it's feeding right when the plant is sweating, right? So when the plant is releasing water and if the water is evaporating away, if you really think about it, that's slightly stressful because water is the solvent, right? Water is how the plant grows. The water is what gives the plant its elasticity. You got to think about it, right? So how does it evaporate away? So when it's growing or when it's stretching or when it's moving or cracking, all these things are releasing little water droplets in there or the plant's just breathing. Well, just like us, when we're walking around throughout the day and we're not drinking water, what's happening to us? Well, we get dehydrated, we might get cranky, we might get annoyed a little easier. And so all of those things are fatigue and stress doesn't allow us to perform to the best of our ability. That's why it's so important to drink water that's mineralized. My suggestions always drop the balance. I've been on that product for about 10 years and I've seen the value of it, whether I'm drinking it or whether I'm giving it to my plants. 
So just to be really clear, yes, for Sam's comment, it's 100% true. When you're giving a very specific amount of water more often throughout the day, you're not going to have as much humidity developing in your grow room. And so you're probably going to get less bug problems and mold problems, which is going to reduce the need for you to defoliar that one-third of your plant because the environmental conditions are there a lot less for mold and bugs to take hold in your grow room because once again, you're only giving a small amount of water. And when you do that, there's not enough time for pathogens and pests to take hold. But for 99% of all the growers out there, they don't have the time to watch their plants day in and day out and measure every single little thing in their grow room. And I'm not knocking this technique down. I'm not knocking down that 1% of those growers out there because at the end of the day, you go to the club, that's what you're seeing, that $65 top shelf product or higher even, right? We're willing to pay for that because that grower put in all that specific time. And that grower has the confidence to ask for those top shelf dollars, that top shelf dollar amount, because he has to get that amount back because of the amount of time he dedicated to his grow room. What once again, we go back to that other 99% though. That other 99%, we have three kids, we have a wife, we have a job, maybe have two jobs. We're in this because we want to save a little money. And we know that if we dedicated the amount of time you needed to really perfect the crop steering technique, the rest of our lives would crumble because we would no longer be able to take care of our responsibilities and our kids would get neglected. Which goes back to defoliating your plants that bottom one third as being absolutely essential for 99% of us. Because when you defoliate that bottom one third, you're able to have kind of a regular lifestyle while in your garden. You're able to walk into your garden right when the sun comes up or right when the lights turn on because you're kind of mimicking your grow room cycle with your lifestyle cycle. And you're trying to find a time which you're able to be consistent in your grow room while being able to be reliable for your family, friends, your job, and the life you have established and which other people are reliant on you on. And when you defoliar that bottom one third, right from the very beginning, you're setting yourself up for success because you'll be able to be a little bit more relaxed on your growing disciplines you need to have in your grow room for a, a successful crop. You'll be able to be a little bit off on your watering because I guarantee you, you know, the five second count, right? Or whatever, it's always going to be a little bit off. You're always going to be adding a little bit more water to one plant versus the other plant. You might be growing different phenotypes and strains. And because you have that diversity, these very simple techniques of trimming up your bottom one third is going to give you a healthier growing experience because you'll find that you're running into less pathogen and pest problems later in the growing season. If any of you guys haven't watched some of my water videos I talk about, this is also where having structured water and healthy water I always push and recommend drops of balance because I know what it does. I went down to the scientific level on this situation. And I know that when you add in more trace minerals, just not the macro mineral, but more trace minerals, there is more surface area in the water itself. Because when you have all these different types of trace minerals, in water, and if you can imagine it, magnesium, calcium, boron, whatever it is, each of these minerals has surface area, right? So this is the water, these are the minerals. And each of these minerals has more surface area. And with more surface area, there's going to be more oxygen carrying capabilities. The water is actually going to have something to hold on to, and it's going to be harder for it to evaporate away. If this sounds crazy to all of you guys, it's not. It's it's basic science. This is called boiling point, all right? And if you have one substance, so they always say, right, water, the boiling point is 212 degrees. That is H2O specific. But if you had salt in here, if you threw an extra salt, it would actually increase the boiling point of the water. 
And if you went up in altitude, it would decrease the boiling point of water. And if you went below sea level, it would actually be harder for water to boil. So remember, when there is substance in the water, it actually changes the boiling point of water. It's same situation here. When there is more structure in your water, more things in your water, it will be harder for the water to evaporate away. And by doing that, it also will help with a healthier growing environment throughout the growing season. So what I'm always doing in this channel is to teach and educate people how to grow these plants with ease, in line with your core values, and not being a slave to your grow room. I hope this video was helpful. Once again, thank you so much for posting, you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone.